channeling my inner Demi Lovato. Queries? Is that what it does? Let's do this. Hey everyone, welcome to the seventh lesson in the Firebase database for SQL developer series. And today I'm going to teach you all about multi-path updates. So if you watched the previous video, you learned about denormalization. And denormalization is just a fancy word for duplicating data to reduce or simplify your queries. And when you denormalize your data, you have all these little data pieces everywhere, and you can just do one read rather than doing a complex join or another query. And while this is great for read performance, there are some complexities with it. When you're duplicating data everywhere, how do you make sure that all that data is consistent when one changes? And that is exactly what multipath updates does. So let's dive right down into the laptop. The goal of multipath updates is to combine consistency with denormalization. This is the database that we've been working on so far, or a subset of it. And we have the users and the event attendees. So the users are simply just our users, and event attendees are the events that a user is going to. And in this case, you can see that we're denormalizing the user data. So underneath user slash one, that's all the profile information for David. And we just copy that data underneath event attendees fm slash one. And while this is great because we won't have to do a join to get the user data, if we update David to Dave in users, how do we get event attendees to update as well? Well, you might be thinking, I know how this works. This is pretty easy. I'm going to create a root reference to my database, then create a reference to David's location at users slash one, and then create a reference to the event attendees record for David at event attendees slash fm slash one. And at this point, you have two references, and we can just update both of them to have the name of Dave. And while this will work for this simple case, what if Dave is going to other events? How do we know all the events that Dave is going to? And to do this, we can create a lookup. So a lookup is just a data structure that groups related values together. And we can use one key to find other things in the lookup table. And in this case, we're using the user ID key to find all of the events this user is going to. And we've named this data structure user events. So user events slash UID slash event ID will tell us if that user is going to that event. And in practice, this is how it would look like. It would be user events slash one, and then the keys of all the events the user is going to. And we're just simply storing true next to each event because we're just saying true, that user is going. And you could store really anything you want at this point, but true is just sort of the convention. And now that we have this lookup table, it becomes really easy to update all of the names for all the events that the user is going to. So we create a reference to the root of the database, and then we create a reference to the lookup. And after that, we're just going to do a reference to event attendees because we're going to use it inside of this once. So we're going to get all of the events that Dave is going to, and then we're going to loop through each one because snap.foreach will return each event as a snapshot. And now what we'll do is we'll create a reference to the event attendees record. So this is the event attendees record that says that David is going to this event. And we want to get that denormalized record up to date with the profile. So to do that, we'll say attendees.child. And at this point, we need to provide the event key. So the event that they're going to. So event snap.key will provide us the key. Then we'll say dot child of snap.key. And snap.key is just the user's ID. And you can see that because up where we're creating the Dave's event reference, we're ending with slash one. And key is always the last key in the reference. And now that we have the proper reference, we'll just say update and update it to the new name. And this will loop through each event the user is going to and update everyone and keep all of our denormalized data consistent. But there is an issue. Remember that this code is written on the client. And so we're just processing three event attendee records right now. But imagine if we were processing 300 or 3,000. And that could take a couple of seconds for this loop to go through. And that is plenty of time for the user to close out of the app or leave the web page. And this will leave your data in an incomplete state. Some of the records will be Dave, and then some will still be David. 
And this is really hard to roll back and update because you have to do it by hand. So rather than taking this approach, we can use multipath updates. Multipath updates provide you an atomic operation. So the operation either succeeded or it failed. There's no incomplete state. So the way a multipath update works is that you specify multiple paths and then the value to be updated at that path. And then in JavaScript, you do this with an object. With Swift, it's just a dictionary. And in Java, it's simply a hash map. And you can see even through the three different SDKs that it looks nearly the same. When you create the update object, you want to make sure the paths start from the same root. And in this case, it's the root of the database. And that's what you'll do most of the time because this tends to be easier. And then from there, you update from that root reference. And then everything will process as one atomic operation. So this is how we can create the object by hand, but you probably want to be able to create it dynamically. And to do that, we can use the lookup. So we're going to create a function in JavaScript that allows us to update the name for the user's profile, but also all of the event attendees records that we get back using the lookup. So we'll create this function, and it will take in a root reference, the user's ID, and then also the name that we're going to update. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a reference to the user events lookup. And then after that, we're going to read that data one time, because this will pull us back all the events that the user is going to. From here, we can use object.keys in JavaScript to get back all of the event keys as an array. And then we'll create a placeholder for our update object. And now that we have the event keys array, we'll do a for each and iterate through it. And for each iteration, we are going to create a path to the event attendees record. So we'll start that with event attendees slash the event key slash the user's ID and then slash name because we're updating the name and we set that to the updated name. Now the last thing to do is we need to create one entry for the user's profile. So we'll create a path to users slash UID slash name and set that to the updated name. And lastly, we're going to return rootref.update and then update everything atomically from the root. And this will return a promise from this function, which is a really nice way to model an atomic operation. So to use this, we would call update name, pass in the root reference, the user's ID, and then the name to update. And with a promise, we can call dot then. And if it's successful, this will get called. And we know that our atomic operation has succeeded. If it failed, though, dot catch will be called. And we can see the error. So no incomplete states. And what this will look like is you'll see that the user profile will be updated and all of the event attendees as well. Now, multipath updates are really great because you get consistency with denormalization. But there are a few gotchas that you want to look out for. And the first is, is that a lot of first-time users and really you know, even experienced users can destroy a lot of existing data. So this is the multipath update object we created in the previous sample. And you can see that we're just specifying the deep path with the new value. But let's say instead of creating the object like this, you thought to do it like this. So rather than ending with the deep path of slash name for everyone, you created an object of name and then saved that at the root. So you might think that that does the same thing, that it updates the name from David to Dave in the database. But that's actually not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is, is that it's going to delete all the existing data and only update the name of Dave. And the reason why that is, is because when you create a multipath update, you need to make sure that you're going as specific as possible at the path. Because a set will replace all of the existing data at that location. The next gotcha is dealing with large data sets. So this is another multipath update object. And so rather than just updating the name across all of the duplicated fields, we're also going to update the age across all of these fields. And you can see that this starts to become an exponential operation, that every single time we want to update a new property, it has to be updated for every single entry. And so while this is really small, if you're dealing with hundreds of fields or hundreds of events, this is going to get really big, and it's going to be a large update over the network. So when you get to this point, you might want to switch to the server side. And the way this works is, is that you just simply update the user's profile in this case. 
So on the server, you'll listen to the child changed event for the user's key, and then every single time a profile updates, you'll get that change, and you'll be able to fan out all of those changes to all of the denormalized paths. Multipath updates are how you get consistency with denormalization and in one atomic operation. So when you're duplicating your data across your databases, make sure that you set up your paths appropriately so you can get consistency and denormalization. So that's all for this lesson. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching our video. You might also enjoy this video or even this video. And you should subscribe because it's a snap. Oh, ow, that was a bad decision.